Hello, uh, today I want to show you one of the issues that comes up with internal rate of return calculations. Uh, a lot of times when people learn internal rate of return calculations in a real estate finance class or more generally just a finance class, some PhD in finance says something to the effect of if you're doing an IRR calculation you don't want your signs to flip. That is to say you don't want your cash flows to go from positive to negative. And this is rarely explained, usually there's lots of shrugging of shoulders. I'd like to show you what actually happens if the signs flip, and I'd like to show you how Microsoft Excel handles internal rate of return calculations, because this is something a lot of people get confused on, and I think you'll find it interesting. Okay, great. So I'm Josh Carr. Uh, this is carrealestate.com, and I want to walk you through how it works. So here goes. Uh, a while ago, this was about a year ago, two years ago, a colleague of mine sent me a stream of cash flows that looks like what you see on the screen. There were a stream of quarterly cash flows, uh, you had some positives, some negatives, some positives, some negatives, positives, you get the idea. And he calls me up and he says, you know, when I take the net cash flow, that is to say the sum of these roughly 10 years of cash flow, I get 46 million. Uh, if I do a sum if to add up all the negatives and a sum if to add up all the positives, I put out 44 million, I get back 91, I'm netting 46. And here's the weird part. If I do an IRR calculation, I end up with 980%. Now, you don't have to be a financial whiz kid to understand that if you put out 44 million and you get back 91 million and you've netted 46, you've doubled your money. And if you doubled your money, there's really no logical reason why you'd end up with 980% on your money per quarter. That's not even per year, that's per quarter. So that's like, you know, 4,000 and change per year. And if I do an XIRR calculation, and if you don't know XIRR and how it works, I'm not going to explain it, uh, but let's just simply say if you do an XIRR calculation, uh, you don't get a better answer either. You end up with a million percent, which is also clearly broken. So I remember my basic finance, and I say, okay, let's take the IRR, and let's set that to be the discount rate, and let's do a net present value. And the MPV comes out as zero when I set my discount rate to be my IRR. In other words, it's working. The math is correct. Now, when I do this, people look at it, and they can't wrap their brains around it. They can't figure out why it's broken. Here's the problem. When you put an IRR calculation, there's the second argument of the IRR calculation, which is the guess. Now, most people ignore the guess when they do the IRR. And if I bring up the input screen, you'll see here that we have, let me just bring that up here. We have a guess, which is currently blank and it's coming up with 900% and no one thinks about this. And it says, this is a number you guess that's close to the IRR, we use 10% by default. In other words, the way the IRR works is, it tries a guess rate, and when it can't figure out the guess rate and it's not correct, it goes higher, it goes lower, and it keeps fumbling its way along until it gets an IRR calculation that is, as I said, correct. So it starts with 10, it tries higher, it tries lower. The problem is, that if you have positive values and negative values in your IRR calculation, it's possible that the terms could cancel each other out. That is to say, if you look at your IRR calculation, when you have positives and negatives, the positive terms and the negative terms could wipe each other out, and that basically means that if the signs are flipping, you have the possibility that you could have multiple solutions to the IRR formula. Now, most people don't think about this. Most people just say, hey, I've got my initial cash flow, I've got my future cash flows, don't sweat it. The problem is that since you have multiple solutions, the way you get to the multiple solutions is based on what the guesses are. So if you start with a guess of 10%, you might get one answer. If you start with a guess of, say, 2%, you might get another. Now, there are a lot of ways to represent this. I could do stuff with curves. I could do some stuff with higher math. For now, I'll just simply say, if the signs flip, you get multiple solutions. And depending on what your starting guess is, you might get one answer versus another answer, depending on if your guess is high or low. Or to put it another way, 10% 
is a high guess. These are quarterly cash flows over 10 years. If you've got quarterly cash flows over 10 years, a guess of 10% per quarter would be like 50% per year with compounding. And that's silly if you've got 10 years of cash flows where you're doubling your money. 10 years of cash flows doubling your money might be closer to, I don't know, 7 8% a year, which is kind of like 2% per quarter. And if I put in 2% and I press OK, it recalculates the internal rate of return, and I end up with 1.3% per quarter. Now, most people look at this and say that that looks right. That sounds reasonable for a dollar in, a dollar out. Uh, sorry, dollar in, two dollars out over 10 years. That sounds reasonable as a quarterly cash flow. So is the 980% answer that I had earlier wrong? I wouldn't say it's wrong. I'd say there are multiple answers to the IRR formula. And depending on what guess you choose, you'll get a different answer. And instead of getting all the answers calculated for us by Excel and then saying, which one do you want? It just simply says, I'm giving you the answer that's closest to the guess. Again, this only happens if your cash flows flip because you could have the different terms of the IRR formula cancel each other out. Okay, so hopefully this has been instructive and it helps you understand how IRR works. Thank you.